so the after completing everything they, these are the last two last type of question that is remaining that are the power transmission sums in this also there are epicyclic gear trains given the only difference is we have to find the rpm and rpm also you have to find the rpm the number of teeth of gears and all that stuff but additionally we also have to find the amount of power transmitted remember in any gear train there is always a driving shaft and a driven shaft so as the rpm changes the torque on these shafts will also change i have explained it afterwards but just remember there is input power given by the driving shaft and there will be an output power coming out of the driven shaft so we have to calculate how much power is coming out from the output shaft so in these sums we will be seeing this only okay so in this first power transmission sum it is simple i have solved this initially also this question but without the power transmission part here i am including the power transmission part as well okay so there is a sun gear and there are two planet gears even though there are two planet gears we will be considering only one because the motion of both the planet gears is same to same okay so it is not necessary to consider the motion of both it is enough to consider the motion of one planet gear because both will be moving in the same way okay so there is this sun gear there is this planet gear and there is this arm which is connecting the sun and the planet gears and there is this outer annular gear okay so they have told us that the planet gears have 50 teeth sun has 30 teeth okay and it is a fixed annulus that is this a is fixed and the driving shaft carrying the uh, the driving shaft carrying the sun wheel so the sun wheel is your driving shaft and it is transmitting how much power 3 kilowatt power at how much rpm 300 rpm so the sun wheel is your driving sun gear is your driving shaft it is transmitting a power of 3 kilowatt at 300 rpm and the driven shaft is connected to an arm this arm see as these planet gears rotate this arm will also rotate so if there is a shaft at the center of this that shaft can be used as the output shaft okay so that is your output shaft what have they given us determine the speed of the driven shaft that is determine the speed of this arm and what is the torque transmitted if the overall efficiency is 95 percent i will explain what do you mean by torque okay uh, so torque is basically the amount of force required to rotate a body okay so it is just asking what will be the torque produced in the arm a if the overall efficiency is 95 percent what do they mean by that that 3 kilowatt is the input power some of the power will be lost in friction there will be some noise there will be some heating up heating up of some parts so some amount of power is lost what is the amount of power lost 5 percent of 3 kilowatt the remaining power is coming out from the output shaft so we have to find out all these things in this question okay so this these are the power transmission type of sums this is also an epicyclic gear train the only difference in this question is they are also asking us to see asking us to calculate how much power is transmitted from the driving shaft to the driven shaft it is not very difficult i will explain this how it is done but before doing that we have to find out the rpm of the whatever things that are asked to us okay so first of all like always because this is an epicyclic gear train we will draw this table okay so by now you should know this so i am going to fill it very quickly okay so this is zero this is plus one p will be minus ts upon tp and this will be minus ts upon ta okay now by now you should know how to fill this up okay if you don't know okay i will just show it for once again over here okay see we have to find np ns is equal to ts upon tp so np becomes ts upon tp because ns is one so one because they are externally meshing hence minus sign again Na is meshing with NP is equal to TP upon TA. So Na becomes TP upon TA into NP. NP is what? Minus TS upon TP. So TP, TP get cancelled and minus TS upon TA. Multiply all by M.
एड इन ओके नाउ दैट ऑल दिस इज डन वी हैव टू फाइंड आउट द वैल्यूज ऑफ एम एन एन टू फाइंड आउट द वैल्यूज ऑफ एम एन एन वी रिक्वायर टू आरपीएम दे हैव गिवन अस एन ए इज इक्वल टू जीरो सो ए गियर ए सो दिस इज इक्वल टू जीरो एन माइनस एम इन टू टी एस अपॉन टी ए इज इक्वल टू जीरो एन एस इज इक्वल टू थ्री हंड्रेड सो आई विज राइट इट एज एन प्लस एम एन प्लस एम एम प्लस एन एस सी okay so it is equal to 300 this will become equation 1 further simplifying equation 2 n minus m into ts is 30 okay what is the value of ta value of ta has not been given to us but we can say c entire diameter of a entire diameter of a is what diameter of p plus diameter of s plus diameter of p so diameter of a is what diameter of p plus diameter of s plus diameter of p using our formula modulus is diameter upon t so diameter is modulus into t we can write over here m into ta m into tp i will just write 2 because there are two times plus m into ds mm m gets can sorry ts mm m gets cancelled ta is equal to 2 times tp plus ts So two times TP is hundred. TS is thirty. So TA becomes one thirty. Substituting it over here, we get this equal to zero. This becomes our equation number two. Solving it simultaneously. So n plus m is equal to three hundred. N minus thirty divided by one thirty is equal to zero. So n is fifty six point two five, and m is two forty three point seven five. Okay, what are they asking us? They are asking us the RPM of the arm. So what is the RPM of the arm? RPM of the arm is n only. So n is what fifty six point two five. So uh, RPM of arm is equal to what n, which is equal to fifty six point two five. it is positive so it is anti clockwise okay so we found out this value which is in anti clockwise because it is positive and they are asking us to find the torque transmitted to the arm okay now see what is the we will first see what power is then we will solve it over here okay so this is an important part please pay attention see what is power power is the rate of doing work okay so power is what work upon time power is the rate of doing work per second okay so power is what work divided by time what is work work is defined as force into displacement force into displacement this is work okay so power becomes what work upon time this entire is work this is divided by time so power i can write this equation like this force into displacement upon time right i have just taken it over here what is displacement upon time displacement upon time is velocity so power is what force into velocity now when is this equation valid this equation is valid for linear motion when the bodies are moving in a straight line but in our case the bodies are not moving in a straight line they are rotating so there is rotational motion so whenever there is rotational motion force is uh, force changes to torque and linear velocity changes to angular velocity so what is the formula of power power is what torque into angular velocity okay so over here see what have they given us that s uh, the uh, they have given us that the sun gear is the driving gear which has a power of 3 kilowatt okay and what was the rpm of uh, sun gear 300 just now we saw power is what torque into omega so we can write over here ps that is the power of sun gear is equal to torque of sun gear 
into angular velocity of sun gear. What is the formula of angular velocity? Angular velocity is what? 2 pi n upon 60. So angular velocity of s is what? 2 pi n s upon 60. So over here power is what? 3 kilowatt. So converting it into watt. 3000 watt is equal to torque into angular velocity. Angular velocity is what? 2 pi n s upon 60. 2 pi into 300 divided by 60. So what is the torque transmitted by the secondary gear? It will be 3000 into 60 divided by 2 pi into 300. Okay. So that will come out to be 3000 into 60 divided by 2 pi into 300. 95.49. And what is the this? Newton meter. Okay. This is the torque developed by what? It is the torque developed in secondary gear. Okay. This was just to explain to you how power to torque conversion is done. Okay. Now what we have to do, they have asked us what is the torque in the arm. Okay. So to find out the torque in the arm, we will use this same logic. See, power is equal to torque into omega. We will use this same logic. But instead of S, it will be power R is equal to torque R into angular velocity R. Okay. So what will it be? Power of developed by the R is equal to torque of R into angular velocity omega R. P is equal to tau omega. Okay. But look over here. What have they given us? They have also told us that not all power is transmitted. This is my driving shaft. But there will be some frictional losses, noise and all other losses. Because of that, only 95% of the power is transmitted. Means out of 3 kilowatt, only 95% of 3 kilowatt is transmitted to the arm. Other 5% is lost to friction and other losses. So what is the power that is reaching the arm? It is 95% of 3 kilowatt. Okay. What will be the torque in R? Well, we have to find that. Do we know the angular velocity of R? Yes, we know the RPM of R. Using this RPM of R, we can find out the angular velocity of R using this formula 2 pi n upon 60. So you write over here 2 pi n of R. What is n of R? 56.25. 56.25 divided by 60. 2 pi n upon 60. So what is the torque of R? Torque of R. Taking these things over there. 95 into 3000 into 60 divided by 100 into 2 pi into 56.25. So the torque in the R is equal to 95 into 3000 into 60, 100 into 2 pi to 56.25. Torque comes out to be 483.83 and the uh, unit for torque is Newton meter. Okay. So this will become my torque. How much? 483.83. 483.83. 83 newton meters